it is well known that I spend a lot of time on Facebook Marketplace. I know what's gonna be an older or less expensive bike, and I know what's gonna make something a more expensive bike. I'm gonna go through a bunch of different bikes at a bunch of different price ranges, and just kind of give you a few key things to look for when you're picking out a bike. All right, so let's find a more entry-level bike or what some people would call a cheaper bike and we'll work our way up to a more high-end bike so I can show you what something like that would look like. So right now I'm seeing this Trek here. It's a pretty cool bike actually. Sometimes the older the bike you get, the more it can have that cool factor while also being more affordable. So if you really wanna go that retro style, this would be something to look for. But a lot of the reason why I'm showing you this bike is because it has a lot of things on it that you would look for when looking for a lower end bike or an older bike. So a couple things that I noticed, this is a really good picture right here. You can see a lot from the side angle. So if, if you're posting a bike on Facebook Marketplace, always post this side angle because you can tell a lot about the geometry of a bike from the side angle. A lot of people do weird different angles and you can't really tell what a bike's going to look like. So side angles butter so one of the first things i notice about the bike is this super long stem now on this style of bike the geometry is very old school like you can just kind of tell it looks more like that classic road bike style so you got the longer stem you got the steeper head tube angle which basically means it's more like this than like this this is slack this is steep obviously it's not going to be that slack but yeah it's going to have that steeper head tube angle so this bike is a 27.5 which is great because i love 27.5 it has a smaller cassette in the back here and it has a what looks like a either two by or three by system up front which is good because back in the day, they didn't have the technology to have the large cassettes like we have now, the 11, 12 speed cassettes that are on higher end bikes. So when you see a smaller cassette like this in the rear, most likely it's either on a downhill bike or it's on an old school bike with a two by in the front. You definitely could swap this out for a one by in the front, but you would lose a lot of gear range. So, you know, it is what it is. The geometry on this is definitely a little bit more cross country. As you get into the older style bikes, it becomes a little bit better for long treks, no pun intended, and not quite as good for smashing downhill and stuff like that. You can just tell even from this angle that it has super narrow bars, which are also a little bit more cross country oriented. So if you were getting this bike for $260 and we're just riding around some local trails and just not really doing anything too crazy, this could be a perfectly fine bike. It seems like it is well taken care of for its age and definitely has a lot of character. So if that's something you're into, then I would suggest a bike like this. All right, so let's go up in the range a little bit. So we were at 260 there. Let's maybe look for Let's see what this is. $300 here. We got the big butt saddle. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. It's a bit rusty here in the drive train, so that's not good. You got to make sure you lube them puppies. That's really freaking brown, which is not the color you want for your drive train. But you can tell there's a couple more modern parts on this bike. And as we get up in price, that's what you can expect. There's two basic types of headset there's the threaded headset and the threadless headset and this is the threadless headset it's it's a bit of a safer system and it's also a little bit more easily serviced so a lot of modern bikes or basically all modern mountain bikes these days will have this system that's one thing you're definitely going to notice on newer bikes even though this isn't the best bike it still has some of those more modern features Another thing I noticed about this bike is it has these silver stanchions here, which usually indicates it's made of steel, which is obviously a heavier material than aluminum, which is what most higher end mountain bike fork stanchions are made out of. And it's just going to make this fork basically heavier. And when you have a heavy fork, you have a heavier bike and that's just not good. So that's something that you will look for on more low end bikes. Nothing completely wrong with, with anything, honestly. Any any of these old 
kind of outdated or lower end parts they're, they're not necessarily bad per se but if you're looking for something higher end don't necessarily look for a bike that has silver stanchions another thing i noticed about this bike is there's no dropper post on it it is just a regular seat post which again is fine in a lot of use cases if it's a downhill bike you don't necessarily need a dropper post if it's a cross country bike you don't necessarily need a dropper post but i'm gonna put this out there and it might be a controversial opinion but most trail bikes should have a dropper post it makes them a lot easier to ride so the handlebars here too is another thing they're not super narrow not super wide pretty decent you know this bike all in all all the geometry and all things considered it's really not that bad of a bike for three hundred dollars the drivetrain is probably the worst part of this whole bike all right enough has been said about this specialized hard rock let's move on all right now let's up the price a little bit so as i'm looking through these bikes so a couple things you want to look for when buying a bike off a of facebook marketplace are things like brand names now everybody knows trek specialized giant all really good brands there's also a lot of other brands too that are less known like orbea is probably a little bit less known rocky mountain less known Niner, probably a little bit less known, but they're all great bike brands. So if you really don't know what bike brand is good and which one is not, then I suggest looking it up. But when you see things like Swin, when you see brands like, let's see if we can find any other kind of more Walmart brands. Let's see. Ba -ba -ba. There's another Schwinn, baby. There's a Kent True Vale. So this is an interesting bike to talk about because this is a Walmart bike that is trying really, really, really hard to be a legit mountain bike. And right off the bat, you see the kickstand. That's always an indicator that this is no high-end mountain bike on a showcase room floor by any means. But the Kent True Vale is an interesting bike. A lot of people have been making videos about it the last few years. And that's because, like I said, it's it, it does appear to be a pretty solid mountain bike with some very deceivingly not great parts on it so a lot of things i've heard about the bike is things like the bottom bracket not being as good it, and again it's kind of hard to tell if you're if you're somebody that's not super into bikes this might look like a super legit mountain bike it has that geometry that we're looking for it has a lot of the same characteristics that a entry-level trek specialized giant might have but it's a lot cheaper you can get this bike i think for like two or three hundred dollars correct me if i'm wrong from walmart and another thing to, to mention about walmart is that when you get a bike from walmart it is put together by a walmart employee not necessarily a true bike mechanic so when you're buying a specialized or something from your local bike shop it's being put together by somebody that knows what they're doing. They might be, you know, an entry level mechanic, but at least they're going to be more experienced than somebody that's putting patio furniture together at Walmart. So, but yeah, a couple things to look for on this bike. Again, the kickstand. You got mechanical disc brakes, which isn't horrible, but isn't really the best. Seth Bike Hacks and a couple other people, um, Chicken Sendies, I think, has a video about the Kent Travail because this is a very interesting bike and that's why so many people have made videos about it. So, all right, enough of the old Kent Travail. Let's go back up to the top. So let's look at a slightly nicer bike. Maybe we're trying to spend like $700 or something. All right, we got a Kona. Okay, you know, going off of our eyes here first before we even look at any of this information over here on the side. It looks those might be mechanical i'm gonna have to see it's kind of hard to tell sometimes those look hydraulic to me so if you can't like tell off of a picture sometimes too the best thing is to get the information of the bike and just google it and a lot of times on websites here i'll show you so you go to santa cruz's website so if you go to Santa Cruz, you can go to the very bottom and they have this thing called a bike archive. So you can kind of search older bikes because a lot of times when they sell out of their bikes, they will take them down off the site and they'll put them in this thing called a bike archive. So if you're looking for an older bike, you can find a lot of information out there, figure out whether or not it has X, Y, Z. 
But for now, we're going to go off of looks. It has a dropper post, which adds some value to it, obviously. It looks like a PNW dropper post nonetheless, too, which is a pretty sweet. Yep, it says PNW Rainier dropper post. So that adds some value, obviously. It looks like they have some legit pedals on there, too. Those might be metal pedals. Again, brands definitely matter with these kind of things. Those could be some, some Amazon pedals, in which case, you know, you got to tread lightly, no pun intended. But... Again, you got the silver fork here. It's not anything crazier than entry-level hardtail here, to be honest. So $625, it's, it's hard for me to say whether or not this bike would be worth it. So let's move up to something with a little, little bit higher-end parts and see if we can point out a couple things about said bike that make it worth a little bit more money. I don't want to jump up to this price range up here yet. I, I feel like we've got to take it a little slower. So, okay, here's another Fuse. And again, it has the silver fork, which does, it doesn't always mean it's a bad fork necessarily. I'm not, I'm not going to say that all, all silver stanchions are bad. Th that might even just be some weird crusty stuff on the stanchions they might have been black i don't know i've seen that other times i don't really know what that is uh let me know down in the comments if you know what's happening to these poor stanchions but some things to note on this bike is the slightly larger disc brake rotors the slightly larger cassette here which typically means that it is a little higher end it has a dropper post which is good and a one by in the front so yeah for $1,100, this is definitely a step up from some of the other hardtails we've seen. So yeah, the Fuse seems like a super sick bike. Oh, another thing too to notice is in the fork here, it's kind of hard to tell, but this is what's called a uh, through axle. And it's, it's a bit thicker of a design than the uh, quick release skewers that can go through the fork on a lot of lower end mountain bikes. So when you see, I think it has it in the rear as well for this bike. So when you see that on a frame and on a fork, you just know that it's going to be a more solid bike. It probably has better hubs, better wheels, and the parts can be interchanged with more high-end parts if you want to upgrade in the future. A lot of entry-level mountain bikes, unfortunately, since the parts aren't really upgradable to super high-end parts, there's... Not really much you can do as far as upgrades so a lot of times people will get an entry level mountain bike and think that they can upgrade it but there's a point where you just really can't do much um, because of certain limitations of the frame when you get a bike like this the the, the specialized fuse there's going to be a lot more room for upgrades again like another thing to notice along those same lines is the uh, tapered head tube here so on a lot of entry level mountain bike head tubes, it will be the same diameter at the top here as the bottom, which is known as a non tapered steer tube and head tube. So you can only use the non tapered style forks, which most high end mountain bike forks are tapered. If you were going to want to get something and upgrade, you'd want to spend at least this amount of money here and get a solid frame that you would be able to upgrade. All right, so we'll kind of end off on this. This is a higher end bike. Obviously, we did quite a price jump here, but I'm just going to jump to this because I feel like from this example here, you'll be able to grasp a little bit more as to what a high-end mountain bike should look like. They're asking $3,000 for it, but it's a very good example of all the things that you should look for on a modern high-end mountain bike. So you can see over here, these are obviously hydraulic disc brakes, some decent sized disc rotors here. You got Kashima coating back here on the rear shock. It looks like a Fox shock. I'm not gonna get too into the details of the different models of suspension that are out there, but just kind of give you a basic idea of what to look for. And when you see the black or the Kashima coating, which is more of like a brassy gold color, you can pretty much assume that it's gonna be a higher end bike. There is obviously imposters out there, people that are just trying to put a little bit of color on their entry level Walmart forks to try to make them look a little bit more high end, but Hopefully you can see through that and look at other parts on the bikes to kind of give away what might be lower end and what might be actually legit true high end parts. 
So you see you got the dropper post here. You have the modern stem. Oh, you got carbon wheels. So if you see you have carbon wheels, most of the time that's gonna mean it's a pretty nice bike. So you can tell this is most likely a 12 speed cassette back here. You can tell by the, the really large Eagle gear back here. So that's good. You got the one by in the front. So if you're looking for an example of something that's pretty high end, I would say that this checks all the boxes. Again, it's not the most expensive bike, but if you have something like this, you're pretty well set. This is, this is gonna get the job done for sure. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of information about how I look at a bike on Facebook Marketplace to decide whether or not it is worth spending the money on or not. So if this video helped you, I would appreciate you liking the video. And if you had a good time, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'm Nick and you're watching Nick and Katie. Thanks for watching.